Hello, <clears throat> we'll be starting a new topic. Again, this is pertaining to principles and practice of banking. The topic is financial literacy and our cities. First, we'll talk about what we understand by financial literacy. Well, we have to take the help of a definition given by an eminent economist, Mr. Atkinson, he defines financial literacy as, quote, a combination of awareness, knowledge, skills, attitude, and behaviors necessary to make sound financial decisions. Now, three things which has been talked about by Mr. Atkinson is, one is one should have knowledge, one should have skills, and one should have attitude to understand which is the best way to decide about his financial utilization. So what is important? The three elements are all important, knowledge, attitudes, and behavior. Well, in India, quite a good number of people are not financially literate. According to the Standards and Poor survey, only 24% of Indian adults are financially literate which incidentally is the lowest score among the BRIC nations. Now, why it is important that the financial literacy should be given to most of the people? Many people do not understand the benefits and risk associated when using the financial services and or investing their resources. More particularly, people living in rural and semi-urban areas are unable to use the financial products which are available in the country and they fail to make informed decisions about savings, borrowings, investments and or expenditure. Without knowing the repercussions of the informal financial system they fall prey to informal systems and unnecessarily they will be paying huge penalty by way of interest. So why financial literacy? To enable the wheels of economy moving, it is very important for a country to, to improve the demand for products and services. Now how the demand for products and services can be accelerated? One is educating the people, making them aware that go through the informal or say formal system of financial system, avail the benefits available from the formal system, invest your money in the formal system so that you can gain more benefits available from the products which are being offered by the formal financial system. Who should be provided with the financial literacy? That's the next question. In fact, it requires to everyone in the economy, the users as well as providers. Users are those who are financially excluded, basically the poor people, the lower middle and lower and middle income groups, and also to some extent, high net worth individuals who have no time to think over which is best suited to them. Apart from this, the financial product providers also need financial literacy. Now, one may ask why they need uh, financial literacy. They have the products, but very unfortunately, they are not able to bring out what are the best things available for a particular segment or the community. So they need. So in order to ensure that financial literacy is spread across the country, the Reserve Bank took initiatives and they have embarked upon a project called as Project Financial Literacy. The objective of this project is to disseminate information regarding the central bank, that is the Reserve Bank of India, general banking products, and also directed towards specific provides specific products directed towards specific people 
like the products which are to be used by the school children, college going children, women, rural and urban poor, defense personnel, senior citizens, because these segments require different products at different time scales. So therefore, literacy is an ongoing thing. Now, RBI has taken several steps for financial literacy. One is they have brought out the guidelines, literacy guidelines for the banks. They have brought out booklets. They have also kept on their website various financial literacy literature. And they have brought out some booklets also to be distributed among the school children so that they can learn themselves. Which has been initiated by Reserve Bank of India is about holding financial literacy camps. These camps will make an impact on the rural people so that more and more people can understand the benefits of getting themselves assimilated with the formal financial system that is banking system. So financial literacy centers have been established in the country to disseminate information on general banking concepts to diverse target groups. So financial literacy centers were established maybe after 2009, but this literacy and counseling centers were started way back in 2006. So initially when the Reserve Bank of India embarked this project, they were known as financial literacy on counseling centers. And this initiative was taken by Reserve Bank of India way back in 2006. So later on, they found that it has to be extended to several parts of the country because counseling centers were limited in number and they were basically in major towns, but that was not sufficient to spread the financial literacy. So therefore, these centers were renamed as financial literacy centers. So now these camps are being held by financial literacy centers and financial literacy centers conduct camps for divergent groups like school and college students, women, rural and urban poor, agriculturists, pensioners, senior citizens, so that they will be in a position to make informed financial decisions. Now, camps are being conducted and guidelines have been given by Reserve Bank of India to conduct special camps. So, till 2017 January, RBI had instructed to conduct special camps for all those people who were newly inducted into the financial system. So the guidelines given to the banks were they should hold one camp per month in the rural area for a period of one year. And these camps specifically target towards certain groups, farmers group, small entrepreneurs, school children, senior citizens, SSGs, and so on. So they will be covering topics related to the particular group talking about deposit accounts, small deposit accounts to a senior citizen has no meaning. A pension account, how a pensioner can be benefited will be the target group of senior citizens. So with this idea, the special camps were organized for diversified target groups. For the period from April 2017 to March 2018, banks have been directed to conduct special camps on ongoing digital because the digital campaign was introduced by the government of India and also by the Reserve Bank. And so the people should know what are the digital means available for transacting banking activities. So through UPI, USSD, all this education was imparted through the special camps conducted by the FLCs. Now to conduct all this, FLCs have to incur expenditure. And for this purpose, support is being given by the Reserve Bank of India through the funds. And 
the funding support is to the extent of 60% of the expenditure subject to maximum of rupees 15,000 per camp. So as on today, as on uh, June 15, 2015, 1,226 financial sector centers have been set up across the country by lead banks to conduct the camps. Now we'll be moving on to another topic known as R cities. Now what are these R cities? We should try to understand the background of setting these R cities. In fact, the Rural Development and Self-Employment Training Institutes, earlier known as Root City, took birth in a small village called as Ujire near Dharmasthala in Karnataka. And this was started by a visionary called as Dr. Virendra Hegde, president of Root Set Institutes. The Rural Development Ministry thought that this is a very good concept model to be adopted by the country for self-employment generating self-employment opportunities to all the rural youth. So this model was adopted by the Ministry of Rural Development and a new name was given to the scheme called as Rural Self-Employment Training Institute. Now what is the objective of our cities? The first objective is to identify orient, motivate, assist unemployed youth so that they can go a free residential training, take up self-employment opportunities, start their own activities. So with this idea, the R cities were established. Unless and until a skill is upgraded, new skill is provided to a rural youth, he will not be in a position to start his own activities. So imparting knowledge, imparting skills through organizing programs was an essential ingredient in establishing root cities. So these roots are cities are conducting program on agro-based activities, product knowledges, process knowledges, and also general EDPs. So all these trainees who attend this training are also provided credit linkage with the bank so that they will get the necessary capital from the bank for starting an activity. Apart from this, hand holding support is also given to the rural youth who undergo training and this hand holding support is given for a period of two years, a sufficient time according to me, so that they can stand on their own legs and start an earning for themselves. So the teething problems, if any, if they face, they will be getting the handholding support for a period of two years and they will settle themselves and thereafter they can be on their own. They will also be given exposure to the successful entrepreneurs and they will also get the marketing support from the successful entrepreneurs while they start a new project. So these R cities conduct short term residential intensive self employment training programs and free food is provided to these trainees and accommodation is also provided to the trainees in R cities. R cities are basically managed by banks with active cooperation from the state governments and government of India too. They are established as a trust or a society. The aim of the government of India is to set up 622 R cities in all the lead districts of the country. And this is going to be a big job with active support from the state governments and the banks. Now, Ministry of Rural Development is taking the help of NIRD and PR, that's a nodal agency for implement, implementing this R City project. So NIRD and PR has been given the responsibility of releasing funds, monitoring infrastructure creation, and managing all R cities. So with this, R cities 
should run in a successful way. Now, what is the position of our city so far? Now, as on September 2017, we have 587 our cities in the countries. 35 banks are participating in this project. More 24 lakh people, the rural youth, have been trained so far. And to the extent of more than 16 lakhs, employment has been generated. Banks have dispersed an amount of 342 crores by way of loan for establishing these R cities. So, with this, thank you very much for a patient listening.